Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brick Workshop. Today I'm going to show you how to make this metal storage cabinet. Uh, it doesn't open up, but I've got tubes inside which I can put all my various bits of metal. And the tube depths vary, and so I put longer pieces in one and shorter pieces in another, and so on. And I've got a little tray area here, just for putting little things that I've just cut. Now, part of this was done on the CNC, and so I'm going to separate that off into a, a video which is about this, but CNC orientated. And the other part is about the woodwork side. And I'll show you a tiny bit of the CNC in that, uh, but concentrate on the woodwork. Right, I'm all set up to cut out the six levels of my internal pieces, well, the top and then the internal ones. The very top is going to be a piece of Baltic birch. Um, it's about 17 and a half millimetres thick. I've already measured uh, my 267 millimetres uh, and there's a pencil line and I've got a stop fitted here. So I can now do multiple cuts at 267. And the more astute amongst you will notice that I've actually got seven here. I've got my top one plus six. I'm going to use the sixth one of the Medite as my practice go. Now I'm using the X-Carve CNC. It's made by a company called Inventables. It's available, I think, probably all over the world. I've had it for a very long time now. Uh, I've got my uh, little laptop computer connected to it. I've set up my dust extractor, so it's going to take away uh, the majority of the dust. Right, I'm going to take you through the complete process now of setting up this job using Vectric Aspire. But if you have VCarve Pro or VCarve Desktop, then you should be able to follow it exactly what I'm doing with those programs. First of all, I'm going to create a new file. And here you have a dialogue where you can specify the size of your piece of wood. And in my case, it's 267 millimeters wide. It's 267 millimeters deep. And the thickness of my wood is 17.5 millimeters. You could work in inches if you wished. I want the Z0 position to be in the top of my piece of work and in the bottom left-hand corner, as you can see here. So with that done, I can now say OK. So I'm now in the general drawing dialog box and I'm going to start by creating the three larger circles, which will become cutouts, uh, which are for the black plastic pipe. So I'm going to click on the circle tool. And this is quite useful now because I can specify where the center point of my circle is. And I know that the first circle, that's the one that's going to be here, is going to be an X position of 49.5. And the Y position, because it's quite near the top, is 217.5. The diameter, I could specify the radius, but the diameter is going to be 69 millimeters. Simple as that, and now I create. And there, there is my object, it's created there. Now I've got two more to produce. One's gonna go dead center, and one's gonna be a mirror image of this. Now, if at this stage you weren't quite sure where you were going to place this, you've, there is a measuring tool. For example, I want to measure from the edge of this circle, and there I am, and I want to measure to the edge of my piece of wood, and that's 15 millimetres. I actually knew that, and it, I've also got a 15 millimetre gap up here. But having measurements or measuring facilities is quite useful at different times. Now, my circle that goes in the middle is going to be identical to this one, except that its X position is going to be dead center. Now I could specify that this circle, which is going to go in the center here, uh, has an X position which is 
33.5. And I'll go create. And there you see that circle, which is dead center. Now, another way of doing this is go to the circle tool again. And it still has the figures that I had put in there before. And I could put in a new value here, something spurious, like 90. Create. Close. And that's obviously not where I want it. I want it dead center. So I can click on the object. And then I can go to the align part here. It says align selected objects. I've only got that one selected. And I know that it's correct in the Y direction. So it's OK in this direction. But I want to align it to the center of the material. So I'm going to align it so it's central to the material here. And there it is. And I can close that. And that's that object. Now I could calculate where the third circle is going to go and give its x and y dimensions. But there's another way. I can click on that one. And now I can get a mirror image of that. And the mirror tool is here. And what I want to do is have a mirror image which is flipped horizontal. And there it is. Close that. So I now have my three circles across the top. I'm now going to work on the smaller circles which are used for the white pieces of pipe which you would have seen in the video. So I now know that I want those to be through the center of my material and I want them to be evenly distributed with a 15 millimeter uh, gap on the left hand side for the first circle. So I'm going to choose the circle tool and I know the circle diameter is 43 millimeters. And the X position, given 15 millimetres on the left, and then half of 43, which is 21 and a half, add those two together, so you get an X value of 36.5. And my Y value now is the centre of the material, which is 133.5. Create. And there's my first of those circles. Now, I'll just check that my calculation was correct, and I'll just see that that is 15 millimetres, and yes it is. That's super. So I've achieved that, and I know that, that otherwise is correct. Now I want to have a, another circle, which is going to be a little bit further across, and I've done the calculations and this time I want my X value to be 101.5. Everything else remains the same. And there it is. I can close that. And I want two more, and they're going to be symmetrical, so I can highlight them like that, or I could highlight them by pressing on one, and then pressing the Shift tab, I can click on the other one. So I've got them both highlighted, and I'm going to my mirror tool again. I'm going to flip horizontal, and so there I have all the circles done. The only thing that remains now is the tool tray, which is a rectangle. The first thing you, you can look at is where you want the anchor point to be. And it might just as well be, for me, the bottom left-hand corner, because I want the bottom left-hand corner to be 15 millimetres in from the left and 20 millimetres up from the bottom. Now, I want it to be radius external, and I have the value already here, 15 millimetres for that radius. Now, my actual... Uh, rectangle is going to be 227 millimetres wide and it's going to be 60 millimetres deep. And there it is created. Now if you look at that, it's not quite dead central. I think that's probably because my calculations were slightly wrong. So I want 30 away from 267, which makes 237. So that's where I went wrong. I put 227 instead of 237. So I can now go back in, edit that, and say create. 
And if you notice, we've actually now got two versions. So that version, I can just press the delete key and delete. So there's the corrected version exactly where I want it. Now at this stage, it's a good idea to save your work. So I'm going to go in here, file, save. I'm going to put this in the demos area and I'm going to call it metal storage and saved it. So that's now saved and that's just the drawing element of what I've done. I've now actually got to tell it to do a bit of CNC work. This is the top tray. Um, I now need holes in all seven of these places here and I need the little cutout here. So I can deal with the holes first of all. I'm going to highlight them all, like so. I'm now going to go to my toolpath menu and I'm going to choose the profile toolpath and I need to be cutting here at a depth of 18 millimeters. That takes me safely through the material. Now my cutter is already selected, uh, but I want a quarter inch or 6.35 millimeter end mill. It's selected there. But if I were to press the select, I can choose from any one of the cutters which are already provided with the default program, or you can create cutters of your own. When you do that, you can specify some extra notes. And I, I've actually created this one. Uh, it says it's a 6.3 five millimeter quarter inch and it's set up for wood because I've now set up my parameters here of the feed rate and the plunge rate uh, that I want this tool to operate at and that's really important if you were uh, doing cutting in metal you might want to have these a lot slower anyway so I'm happy with that cutter that's selected and now uh, you've got to then decide how you're going to use the uh, drawings or the vectors that you've created here. I want this cutter to go around the inside because we're making holes. So that's as it's selected there. Now there's one thing that you really must make sure and that is once the cutting comes towards completion you don't want the piece in the middle, the cutout piece, start rattling around and get hit by the rotating tool. So you can add tabs now you go in here and you can say how many tabs you want. There are two for each hole. I'm going to close that. And my tabs are two millimeters thick and eight millimeters long. And the only other thing I've got to do now is to give this first toolpath a name. So I'm going to call it top tray, or top level. I think when I actually did this the first time, I called it something completely different. Top level, and I then say what cutter. I'm going to say 635 end mill. So I now will save this toolpath eventually, and it's going to uh, be called something realistic, which I can then remember. Yes, it is that particular end mill. So there it is. The software is warning me I'm going to cut through the material. I'm happy with that. And if I preview this toolpath, you can now see those are my holes and you can see the tabs here. So that's super. I can close that, but I want to save this as a toolpath. So I go save. And this is where you can now specify how uh, the file is saved to suit your CNC. My CNC uses G-code and it is the XCARV CNC. And Vectric know about the XCARV and it's one of the options that you can take from all of these, all of these different CNC machines and so on. Anyway, so I'm happy, XCARV. G code. So I'm going to save that and it comes up with the same name I used before. I'm happy with that. Save. So I've now saved that. I can now close that dialog and I can go back to my drawing. 
deselect those holes they'd already done. I'm now looking at the tool tray. And for this one, I want a pocket tool path. It's this one here. And uh, it happens to have the right parameters here. I want the cut depth to be eight millimeters. My same cutter is selected, so I don't have to change the tool. There are some other parameters here I don't need to change. I just need to give this an appropriate name. So it's top tray. So I can call it top tray and my same convention, 635 end mill. So I now know what tool it is I set this up for. And there is my little tool tray area. So that's done. I can close that. And I must now save this toolpath again in G-code. Save toolpath. There it is. Save. And I can close that. I go back to my 2D drawing. Now, the next level down, uh, we're going to not need the tool tray. So I'm going to delete that. But I need the seven circles which are there. Before I do any more, I'm going to save this as the next level down. And I'm going to call it level two. I think in the actual, on the actual day, I, I called it something completely different, but it doesn't matter. So that's level two, save. Now, we've got a new file, and I'm going to get rid of these two toolpaths that we created before. So I'm going to delete all of those, so we've got a clean sheet when it comes to doing the previewing. Now, we're at the next level down, and that means that two of my circles, these two, are going to be stop ends. But these five here will be holes again. So I'm going to highlight those, press the shift key, highlight this one and this one, and we're going to go through the same process that we did before. And we're going to have these 18 millimeters deep inside. We want tabs. There are my tabs, and now I'm going to call this level two holes, six, three, five, and mil. So that should be quite meaningful. Calculate. Yes, I know it will cut through. Thank you very much. I'm just going to reset the preview, and now there we go. So I've now got those five holes. That's fine. And I'll save those now. I'm giving this that same name. Save the tool paths. Level two. That's fine. That's done. Close that. If we go back to our drawing, unselect those. I'll select these two now. Now these are going to be slightly different. These are going to be the same profile toolpath selection and this time to guarantee the pipe can go into this hole I'm going to actually have my profile on the line. It means the pipe can go down to the stop end, fit in it with no problem at all. No need for any tabs or anything like that of course and so I'm going to call this level two stop ends and it's 635, oops, 635 and mil. So there we go. Calculate, and if I do preview, you can see now how that's going to work. So that will be the second level where my short white bits of pipe terminate. Close that, save that, save the toolpath, save. So that's done. I can now close that. Go back to my drawing and I can now proceed for all the other la layers and at this stage I delete these two to go to the third layer down. These two will become stop ends, those will be holes. I go all the way through this until I get to the very end when only this bit of the drawing, uh, this tool path, will just be a stop end. So I'm not going to show all the detail but that's the routine to create all the layers 
needed for this particular project. Well, my white pipe is just a little bit tight. Uh, considering this has got to pass through a number of them, that's a little bit too tight. Um, let's have a look at this. Yeah, it's a bit tight. That's a little tiny bit tight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the Vectric Aspire program. I'm going to make these holes here just a fraction bigger. I think actually probably 0.5 of a millimetre at the most, maybe even less than that. Uh, that's an increase in diameter. Um, and the same with these two as well. Because I want the pipe to fit reasonably easy through these holes. Um, I'm not relying on friction between this and there uh, to do anything whatsoever. So I'm going to just do that now. I'll come back with some new tool paths. I'm going to actually put this piece back in. There's nothing wrong with it at all. I'm pretty optimistic that I can put this back in in exactly the right place. And this is now uh, a perfect fit. Well, <laughs> certainly, I've made it just a little bit bigger and um, obviously uh, these pipes vary in diameter very, very slightly, but only by a tiny bit. So, no, I'm pleased with that. That's fine. And if you can see these stop ends, the idea is that this will fit over that like that. Good. Now, because I'm using the same cutter all the way through, this is really easy. I've not reset the machine in any way. I've just used uh, Universal Decode Sender. Uh, so I can move the gantry out of the way in a convenient place so I can put the next square in place tighten it down with the clamps it's all ready the machine knows where it is and I'm now going to do the next level down so I'm going to load the file put my ear defenders on start the router start the extractor And I'm going to send that file. The machine went back to here to uh, recognize where it was. And with that one done, I can undo the clamps. I can remove that one. Just pop back my sacrificial piece. Then put this new blank in. And because I've got these stops, which I've put in here and on the other side, I can always get this back in exactly the same position as I had it last time. Going to clamp this down again. I'm probably overdoing it on the clamps, but being a sort of cautious chap and really a novice CNC user, I always like to be on the safe side. So that's my next blank put in. And so all I do now is to load uh, the next tool path. That last one was uh, level three. So I'll now find level four, level four holes, open, start my writer, start my extractor, and then tell it to send. Goes back to the home position, and off it goes. Now I've checked all the cut pieces for size and uh, everything is fine. It all fits together okay. I did a trial assembly. These are my pieces of uh, plastic pipe which are cut to length. 
the, the lengths of 800, 600, 400 and so on. And I've got a piece of backing board uh, here on the bench. It's, it's cut to the same width as these pieces uh, and that will form the back. The side pieces will go over that to flush with the front and the front piece will be flush with the, the new sides which have been created. And with it up this way, I think you can see just how it's working. So I've got my long one, my next shorter, shorter, and longer, shorter. So there, there they are. And at the top end, they just stick out a tiny bit. So, and there's my little tool tray or tray for putting little bits in whilst I'm wondering what to do with them, etc. So I'm quite pleased with that. All I've got to do now is put the other side on here and on here. I've put a pair of handles on. You can see one there, there's one on my side as well. And once I've put this in, it's finished. I'll just give it a very light sand all round and then it will be done. Well, that's it finished. Uh, now uh, to put some bits of metal in there. Long ones, shorter ones, shorter still, very short and a place to put little odds and ends if one feels inclined. That's it, it's got handles, the front's removable, and that's it, I'm very pleased with that. And it took about four hours to make that, and uh, I rather enjoyed having a little play with the old CNC again. Excellent job. <laughs> <laughs>